Here we have another video in the series of videos about descriptive chemistry. This time I'm going to talk about decomposition reactions. So the general form of a decomposition reaction is that you have a starting material called C, which decomposes to make two separate materials. Okay? Basically it's the reverse of a synthesis reaction, and they come in a wide variety of kinds. So you can have most decompositions tend to be thermal decompositions. And that is the largest category of decomposition reactions that I have here on the board. So you can decompose a carbonate, and when you do, you get certain products. I'll get more about this in a moment. You can just decompose chlorates, sulfites, and hydrates, and hydroxides, and acids, and peroxides. So all of these can be thermally decomposed. That means you actually apply heat, which causes them to decompose. So that could be in a dry condition, such as when you heat up a solid, um, or it could be something when you have something already dissolved in water, such as an acid, strongly heated enough, it will produce a decomposition of the acid that was dissolved in the water. So what I'd like to do next is show you a close-up of these examples, and then explain in detail how they work, so you can take notes and comprehend them, simply as an abstract exercise. But after that, I'd like to show you some demonstrations of some of these reactions so that they are not simply abstract, but have some physical reality for you that you can picture in your mind. I think that this really helps you to understand the material. So let's go ahead and get uh, started with uh, examining these different categories in detail. Decomposition reactions follow the general form of C yields A plus B. Here I have written several examples of thermal decomposition reactions. First, the decomposition of carbonates. When carbonates decompose, they produce a metal oxide and carbon dioxide. Here I have magnesium carbonate, but other metals such as sodium, potassium, and calcium would act in the same way. Ammonium carbonate is special because it does not produce a solid product at all, and instead ammonia, carbon dioxide, and water vapor result from its decomposition. Second, the decomposition of chlorates. Chlorate salts decompose to make chloride salts and oxygen gas. Other metals may take the place of potassium. Third, the decomposition of sulfites. This follows much the same pattern as carbonates, but carbon dioxide is replaced with sulfur dioxide. Finally, the decomposition of a hydrated salt. Blue hydrated copper two sulfate crystals give up their water of hydration to form white anhydrous crystals. All hydrates follow a similar pattern. Here are three further examples of decomposition reactions. First, metal hydroxides may be decomposed to make a metal oxide in water. This is the reverse of the synthesis of metal hydroxides from water and metal oxides. Second, some acids may be decomposed as nitric acid is here decomposed to make dinitrogen pentoxide in water. This is the reverse of the synthesis of an acid from a non-metallic oxide and water. Finally, peroxides may be made to decompose to produce an oxide and oxygen gas. Here, hydrogen peroxide is shown decomposing to make water and oxygen. Barium peroxide can be used in the lab to generate oxygen gas upon heating. What I'd like to demonstrate here is the, the decomposition of carbonic acid. In order to have carbonic acid at all, I have to generate it. And you may be familiar with this reaction. If you mix vinegar and baking soda, the immediate product is carbonic acid. And then it immediately decomposes to become carbon dioxide and water. Here you can see the chemical reaction which produces carbonic acid. The carbonic acid rapidly decomposes to produce water and bubbles of carbon dioxide. And what I'd like to do here is add a little more interest to this process by comparing the rate of reaction when you have it cold versus hot. Gases are less soluble in hot water and reactions are faster under hot conditions. So let's take a look at what happens. Here you can see the temperature of this water is 80 degrees Celsius. This is room temperature water. It's only 20 degrees Celsius. So uh, why don't I take these out of the way for good viewing. And I'm going to add approximately equal amounts of vinegar to each one of these containers. And let's see the reaction that happens. As you can see, it was much more vigorous and quick and more quickly over in the hot water. The colder water is still bubbling away. And what you're seeing is the production of carbon dioxide gas that's what's inside the bubbles. Carbon dioxide gas is the product of the decomposition of carbonic acid.
In this test tube, I have some hydrogen peroxide solution, which you can buy at the grocery store. This is a 3% solution of hydrogen peroxide in water, but trust me, you don't want it any more concentrated than that. And what I want to demonstrate is the catalytic decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Sometimes things that are naturally unstable, such as hydrogen peroxide, do decompose over time, and that's why these are in dark colored bottles and it says on there to keep it cool, because if it gets hot or is exposed to especially ultraviolet light, it will decompose more quickly and no longer have its therapeutic effects. So that's why the bottle is dark, is to prevent it from breaking down to make water and oxygen gas. So when it breaks down, it makes an oxygen, it makes a gas, so it makes bubbles that you can see. And we can speed this process up by heating it, or even better, by using a catalyst. Now normally you put this on a cut. It's bleeding, it's rough, it has materials in it which support the rapid decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. And you can simulate that same effect using a little bit of ordinary bread yeast, which I'm going to do here for you. But let me make sure I don my protective gear, and then I will show you how hydrogen peroxide decomposes to make oxygen. Now what you may not see at a distance, you'll see in a moment in a close-up. What you can see is the formation of bubbles at the surface of the liquid. I'm going to stir this in order to make the reaction more quick and to fill the test tube with oxygen, which I will show is present using a burning splint of wood. So I will blow out the flame. I'll have nothing but a burning ember. And when I put that burning ember into the oxygen-enriched air inside the test tube, it will burst back into life. Because of the presence of additional oxygen, that ember can make that fire come back to life. And so there you see the production of oxygen by the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide.